Happy first day of session, everyone, and welcome to your first day of class. I'm Marketing Communications Manager Daniel Sloan, and on behalf of everyone at Trident, I want to say thank you for taking the next step in your educational journey with us. New students often have a lot of questions, and we are here to help. As a way to ease you into our unique student-centered model, we've designed this webinar that will cover all the areas vital to success in your chosen program. And on behalf of everyone at Trident, I wanna let you know that all of us are here to support you. The past several months, have, there's been a lot of flux, a lot of stress, and you know, school is beginning. Again, for those of us who have students, which actually was just the topic of conversation amongst this panel a few minutes ago. So if you, ever, if you need a helping hand and it's your first day at Trident, we're here for you. And we'll discuss all those ways you know, during the presentation. And so let me quickly introduce today's uh, panelists. Uh, we're joined by Dr. George Del Hierro, who joined Trident in 2010 and currently serves as a full-time instructor and course coordinator in our university college. During his time at Trident, he has worked closely with students in a variety of roles, including academic advising, financial aid, and academic probation support services. He's a passionate advocate for student success. And next, we have Michael Minaw, who's been with Trident since 2017. Currently serves as a project manager in the Center for Student Success, and he is your expert when it comes to the orientation course, and he teaches Tux 101 as well. He has over a decade of professional experience in education. Uh, holding roles such as elementary school teacher, admissions advisor, and academic counselor. Uh, as an online student balancing family, children, full-time work, and more, Michael understands that being an adult student requires the ability to be flexible and manage time well. And during our Q&A session, we'll be joined by a member of our admissions team to help you out further in navigating this session and beyond. Uh, just a few notes before we begin today's session. We will be recording this and sending out a link later this week along with slide deck. So don't worry about seriously writing notes or anything. We've got you covered there. Uh, if you have any questions, find the control panel on the right hand side of your screen. Go about halfway down to the questions box and type them in there. We'll have a Q&A session after uh, Michael and Dr. Del Hierro's presentation. And I think that I think that's everything. So let's get started. Uh, ready to go, Michael? I am. Great. Uh, floor is yours. All right. Uh, so first off, I want to say a, a big welcome to everybody uh, to Trident. We are very excited to have you here, and we're excited that you're here on this first day of class webinar. You're already going to get some of that special sauce to help you move forward and, and be successful here at Trident. Um, I do want to make a quick note and mention that uh, if some of you have been logging in this morning and, and had some technical issues, we are aware of that. If you're still experiencing those issues, um, please reach out to your success advisor, your admissions advisor. We want to make sure we're troubleshooting that. Our IT team is um, on it, and it will be, if, if there are still uh, issues that you're experiencing, that will be resolved shortly. Um, I have not heard any issues in quite a while, so I'm hoping that, that is resolved. But I do want to make a quick mention of that if anyone had experienced that this morning. Um, so what we're going to talk about today, a uh, couple tips for success. That'll be my presentation. We'll move into academic writing uh, with Dr. Del Hierro, and then Danny will get back into career networking uh, after we're done, and then we'll get to questions. So uh, let's move on to the next topic and to some tips for success here as an online student. Um, so briefly, we're going to touch on all of these things here. Um, these are, are very generic uh, aspects of a successful online student, uh, really any student at all. Um, so we will touch on that in a little bit more detail, but you know, you want to be confident, ask questions, especially some of those new students that have never been to online school before. Um, we want to make sure that you're comfortable and you know where to find things. So you, we don't know there's an issue unless you ask. So please let us know. There are lots of resources here that we'll talk about that are uh, available to you if you do have questions. Know that you're supported. That goes hand in hand with what I just mentioned. We have lots of resources and people here to help you out when you, when you get stuck on something. 
Uh, get to know your professors and your peers. They are a great resource when you're in the classroom and you have questions about your uh, specific subject in your class. Uh, they can be a great resource to you. Time management, that is a big one as an online student. That is something that you need to, to really start thinking about and planning. Today is a great day to do that. Um, the fact that you're here alone tells me that you are, are taking this seriously and, and that is something that you wanna take seriously is time management. Um, uh, we'll talk about your long-term academic planning and then just with everything in life, you gotta have fun. I know that Danny had mentioned it's a little bit of a different time that we're in. Uh, there's still a lot of joy we got in the world, we gotta make sure we're having fun with everything we're doing. So let's talk a little bit more in detail about some of these aspects here uh, on the next slide. So the first thing that I wanna talk about that's very near and dear to me is time management. Um, as Danny mentioned in my introduction, I, I am an online student. I actually just finished a program. Uh, so I, I guess I'm not technically anymore, but I'm looking to continue on with my education. Um, I'm also a father of two children. Uh, I work as, I had to mention, I know that many of you out there are here in the online world because you all wear different hats and you all have different responsibilities that, that you have. Online schooling is a great option for those that can be flexible um, and you can fit that time in, uh, in your schooling into to those moments in your day that you can um, fill them and you can get a lot from that. But that time management plan is something that you need to be successful. Um, so. A couple of things that we want to talk about. Everybody's time management plan is going to be a little bit different. So create one that is going to work for you. When I was a student, um, what, found, what I found most helpful was setting aside specific times of the day, um, a couple of days a week, that I would go to school. I would treat it just like I was you know, going to class at, at a brick and mortar institution. So Tuesdays and Wednesdays, uh, in the evenings and then Saturday mornings were my class time. So uh, my family was, they knew that that was something that it was important to me and I was able to go into the office and I was able to um, do the work that I needed to do for my, for my class. So whether that is something that, is, that you need to do or some students will log in every single day just so they're in the flow of getting into the classroom and then they get more comfortable, especially those new students that have not uh, attended online classes before. Uh, you can poke around, you can get used to that flow of being in there every day, and then you're going to find that rhythm that is going to work for you. Um, but I definitely would consider setting aside specific times and days that it's going to work for you. Um, now, with the online school, we know that holidays, weekends, even with um, brick and mortar school, there are, there are holidays, birthdays, things that come up in the middle of classes. So it's great that this, is, this offers you that flexibility, that you can still attend those things, you can still have a weekend, you can still have family time, uh, but you can plan around that. So you know what is going to happen in your life in terms of schedule for the most part, uh, if it's a birthday or, or a holiday that you're going to go on vacation for. So you can schedule time around that. You can do a little bit of more work ahead of time, um, or you can do a little bit of work after when you're done. So it, it's a great way that you can fit this stuff in uh, to your life and still get your degree. Um, some people are, thrive on list making. That is, that is my wife. So she is someone who wakes up every day and she writes down a list of you know, 15 things she wants to accomplish in the day. She gets a lot of joy out of crossing those off. So maybe that's you. Um, whatever that time management plan is, it is definitely something that is the key to success as an online student. What I tell all of my students is that the beauty of online school is that you can go to classes whenever you want but you can also not go to classes whenever you want. So when you develop that plan, you're able to hold yourself accountable to be there when you need to be there. Built into that plan needs to be some support and some flexibility too, because we all know that something is gonna happen. You know, plans don't work out every single time. So if that happens, don't, don't get discouraged. You need to let your professors, your advisor, your advising staff know so we can talk about some options on how to you know, maybe work around that plan and be flexible. Um, so let's talk on the next slide about some of those other resources that are here to help whenever that plan does not work. Um, so many of you have already met your admissions advisor. That is the person that is your, your point person from the onboarding process. Uh, many of you may have also met your finance advisor. That is the person that's going to help you with anything financially related, you know, how are pa classes paid for, et cetera. Uh, if you have not met them yet, the third piece of the puzzle is your success advisor. That's kind of your, your academic team uh, that you have available to you. 
your success advisor is your academic advisor. They're with you through, uh, you know, the first day of class today until graduation. So any sort of questions that you have about classes, when you're going to graduate, any of that stuff, that is that is geared, geared toward them. Um, they are going to keep you on track for your program. So like I said, if you have questions about what classes, how many classes, anything like that, what transferred in, if you're transferring cre credits, that's going to be questions that your success advisor will be will be happy to help you with. Um, and finally, cannot forget professors. We I've been hearing so many things from a lot of my students about the amazing, amazing professors that we have here at Trident in terms of the support that they offer. The they go above and beyond to help their students. So if there is an issue that you're having, maybe you're you're falling behind because that time management plan isn't working. Um, maybe you have to take care of your kids because they have school too and they're at home learning. You know, you wanna communicate those issues that you're having with your advisors and your professors. We wanna make sure that we, we help you if you are having challenges, um, but we can't help any problems that we don't know. So please, if you are having issues, reach out to, to somebody, your academic advisor, your admissions advisor, your professor. We wanna make sure that you know that you are supported here at Trident and we are happy to help you get through that. Um, Besides the person, you know, the personable people that we have here, there's also online resources that are available to you. So a couple of things that we'll mention briefly. The writing workshop and the writing style guide. Uh, after I'm giving my presentation here, Dr. Del Hierro will speak a little bit more in depth about academic writing uh, and the importance of that as you go throughout your academic progression as a student. Along with that, there are math help, math assistance. So uh, Math 95 and Statistics 95 are, are some Kind of bridge classes that you can take if you want to polish up your skills. Um, I got my undergrad degree in English, so those would be two classes that I would definitely be going into if I need to brush up a little bit of math skills. Um, along with that, there is a website that we do have available that we've just developed um, that does offer support on a wide range that Daniel is going to share with you in the chat if you'd like to check out. That is also another online resource that is available to you that offers resources ranging from some of these support systems to how do you reset your password, so any sort of technical issues, is a great resource that we've just recently developed. Um, if you're not able to reach anybody, uh, maybe it's two in the morning and, and you're trying to get some help, that is a great resource that is available to you as well. Um, let's talk a little bit further about some additional inside the class resources that some students have available to them, depending on the course that they're in on the next slide. So, in specific courses, there are additional support that you have access to through tutor.com. Um, the courses that are listed here are English, you know, English 101, Math 101, 102, BHS 220, Operations Management 300, Finance 301, uh, Tux 101 and 301. A lot of these courses we found that, that students struggle in, so we want to give a little bit of additional help inside of these classes. Um, just to bridge any gaps that you may have between the content in the course and maybe something's not clicking. So this is uh, 24 hour a day uh, tutoring help for these specific classes. You'd access this inside of those specific courses. Uh, so if you're scheduled for an English 101 class in the future or Math 201, you can log into that more, comp more section in the class and you'll see that link for free tutoring. That only appears in these specific courses, but it's a great resource if you do need some additional help. So let's move to the next slide. We'll talk about something that's uh, very near and dear to my heart. That is the orientation. Uh, so as Daniel had mentioned, I am the orientation facilitator. Uh, so you may have seen my face or, or my name commenting back to some of your posts. Uh, if you have been in there, uh, you know, checking out the course and seeing what, what a mock classroom is like. Uh, if you have not, I highly recommend it. I know that today's your first day of class, but you, can, you have access to the orientation for six months. Um, it is a great, great resource to help be, essentially build confidence. It's a mock class. You can't do anything wrong, so you can click and you can submit things, and um, you're going to build that confidence to be able to navigate the classroom. Finding where resources are is half of the battle as an online student. So if you have that already under control, then you're you're stuck with the content, which is that's the part that's the fun part, the engaging part. So we don't want you to be thinking, you know, where do I go to find my, my, my grades? Or where do I go to access how to email my professor? You can find all that information inside of the orientation. We found 
that students that do the, participate in the orientation are far more successful than those that do not. So if you have not yet, I definitely recommend it. I look forward to seeing your, your threads in there and replying back and getting to know you a little bit more. Um, but yes, yeah, so you'll have access to that for six months as a student. So let's move on to the, to the last or the next slide here and we will we'll talk about what to do now. So we've, we've mentioned a few things in terms of uh, successful tips, ways to be successful as an online student. So what do we do now? We want to take that first step and log into your class. Um, as I mentioned before, I know that we, we may be having, you may be having some technical issues. Um, hopefully that is resolved at this point. But if you have not logged in yet, I highly recommend after this webinar is over to log into that first class and introduce yourself. You don't need to wait. You can go in and, and be that first person that starts the initial thread to introduce yourself in the classroom. So I highly recommend that you do that today. Inside that classroom, you'll see a class list under your communications tab. You can email your professor. You can introduce yourself and tell them a little bit about yourself um, in, in a you know one-on-one -on -one format. Send them a direct message. Um, see if there's any sort of, if you, maybe you have something coming up that you need to, to, to troubleshoot in terms of time management. That's a great way to do that, especially on the first day of class. It shows that proactivity. Um, if you do have questions, we want you to ask them. As we mentioned, there's lots of people here that want to see you succeed, so please let us know what we can do. We can't solve problems if we don't know that they exist, so let us know if you are having any sort of issues. As we mentioned before, develop that time management plan. That's going to be individualized to you, but you definitely want to make sure that you are um, working in a way that is, is working for you. Make sure it's flexible, but still allows you to, to maintain that work-life balance. That's, that's definitely what we're all about. Um, and then finally, check in with your advisors as you need to. So you may be hearing from your success advisor or your finance advisor throughout your time frame here just to make sure that things are okay. Um, don't be alarmed. We just want to know that you're all right and get to know you a little bit more. Um, as Danny mentioned, I am also a success advisor. So I may be talking to some of you sometime here, which would be very exciting. So finally, let's wrap all this up um, and talk about what, we, you know, what we're going to do now. So we're going to review the course, so log into the class, get to know the calendar, get to know the format, get to know where to go if you need help. Uh, create that time management plan. That is, that is definitely a key. I cannot stress that enough. Uh, make sure that you're completing all your assignments, including those threaded discussions. So the discussions are a large um, part of, of the online world. So you need to make sure that you're participating in those discussions, uh, putting your initial thread in, and then also replying back to, to classmates as well to make sure it's an engaged discussion. As I mentioned, get to know your advisors, your support staff, your professors. We all want to make sure uh, that we're, we want to make sure that you know that we're here to help you. Uh, so, so we want to know you. Let us introduce yourself. Don't be, don't be afraid to be that first person to say hello. Um, as we mentioned, participate in your module one threaded discussion. I would suggest doing that by Wednesday. So that's two days from now. I'm giving everybody on this webinar a piece of homework. Make sure you go in and you do your discussion by Wednesday. You can be that first person that threat that starts the thread and really get that classroom going and get that energy going inside that class. Um, that is definitely something that you want to want to do. And then finally, be proactive. If you do know that something is going to happen or, or something uh, in terms of the future, you have a, a birthday or a holiday or something like that. There's an issue coming up. Um, let us know what we can do. Be proactive. Reach out and, and uh, let your advisors, your professors know. Uh, that you are having some issues and, and we can figure out what we can do to help uh, overcome those issues. That's what we're here for. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn things over to Dr. Del Hierro. He's going to talk a little bit more about some of those tips we talked about with academic writing. Um, so Dr. Del Hierro, the floor is yours. All right. Thank you, Michael. Great information as always. One of the best uh, that we have here at Trident. So thank you, Michael. Uh, on behalf of the faculty, I just want to extend my warmest welcomes to all of you. Uh, it's always the most exciting time of the month for us to welcome in a brand new crop of leaders into the Trident family. And so uh, we all look forward to interacting with you, getting to know you, and, and seeing what great things you accomplish in and out of the classroom. Uh, so this section focuses on academic writing. Uh, it's one of uh, it's one of the points of concern for some students, especially who have been out for a while. Um, uh, it causes some anxiety. And so the goal of these next couple slides are just to relieve some of that anxiety 
and give you some direction to build momentum. So Michael mentioned it, um, but these first couple of days, it's going to be really imperative for you to get the wheels going. And so I hope to provide a broad overview of what your faculty uh, will expect of you with writing and to relieve some of that anxiety for you. Uh, this first slide is just to, it's meant to, to frame your mindset for what the expectations are within academic writing and what and why and how and how is it different from what you might be used to within your military experience or business experience. So the three key differences that I kind of want that I want you to think about um, between business and slash military and academic writing are the goals of writing, the process of writing, and voice. And so when you're in the military, so the first one is the goals of writing. Uh, if you're going to graduate from a call it from a, an accredited institution, you're expected to have a high degree of written and oral communication skills. And so that is kind of what we're, we're helping you, helping prepare you for upon graduation. So the first um, the first uh, point that I want you to think about is the goal of writing. So when you're in the when you're in a business environment and when you're in a military environment, your goal of writing, the only purpose you're writing is for mission accomplishment and to accomplish objectives. The difference within what you're going to find in an academic environment is that that goal, the goal of writing is to help you become a better communicator. And so there are some steps and some areas that we look for as your faculty to help you become a better thinker and to help you become a better writer, a more effective writer. Um, <clears throat> so for example, um, within the military and, and you know in business you're, you're writing to accomplish this objective um, as quickly and efficiently as possible and when you're in your academic classes we're looking for your logic and rational thought development of your ideas so we're not so sometimes this comes out um, when you're answering questions as maybe a two or you know a one to two sentence or a one to three sentence reply to answer a question because you're in that mindset of answering the question and giving the conclusion as quickly and efficiently as possible. But that's not the only thing. That's actually not the most important thing that your faculty is looking for. It's not really what we're looking for. We're looking for the reasons why and how you came to that, to those conclusions, your critical thinking skills and your logic and your, th and your rational thought development. And so that takes more time and it takes more, um, effort to lay out those arguments and to do the research uh, from different sources and uh, integrate the background readings into your experience to, to support your conclusion. So your faculty member is not just looking for the answer. We're not just looking for the conclusion. We're looking for your, your reasons why, your, 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 the thinking and the, and the evidence behind it and your logic and your rational thought development. The second, the second um, area of um, that, that, that's a challenge between, or the difference between military and business writing versus academic writing is the process of writing. So when you're in a business environment or you're in a military environment, your superior would give you a, a command or, a, or an objective to write up a memo or write, a, write this up or write that up, uh, do a report. You pass it off to your superior, your superior edits it, adds a couple things, passes it off to their superior. And before a decision is made, there's two or three hands that have touched this, you know, this document. That's different than what you're going to find here and what your experience will be in an academic environment because you are the single author of this document, of this assignment. So you have to go through the brainstorming. You have to go through the... Um, you have to go through the outlining and the editing and the drafting and the formatting and all those things take time and so you have to consider those elements when you uh, when you develop your time management um, your time management plan for for these classes the third um, key difference is voice so if you haven't noticed especially in the military you're big on uniforms i mean you're dressing the same you're often talking the same and sometimes that comes out in your writing often. That that comes out in your writing, and so that causes some issues because it it raises some concerns for academic integrity issues. Some so we want you to be aware of that. Your instructor will be looking for your independent 
your independent understanding of these concepts. And so we're looking for you to paraphrase different ideas from a variety of different readings and background sources. We're looking for your for you to summarize uh, some of these um, these ideas in your own words. So quotations are great, but your instructor will care more about your understanding of these concepts. And that is different than stripping out a quotation and sticking it in your paper. It's fundamentally different and it takes a lot more critical thinking and a lot more time and effort to summarize these different ideas in your own words and put them in. But that is what your instructor is looking for. And if you if you consider these things, you're gonna, it's you you will reap the benefits of of this program at, upon graduation and i promise you you will become a more effective uh, communicator and contributor to your organizations the next slide uh, is just meant to give you a general overview of academic writing structure and so uh this this is not an all-inclusive slide uh, these are just some tips that i as an instructor i see uh, students kind of missing these points and so as a writer that you may not have as much experience in an academic environment or maybe you've been out for a while uh, i hope that this gives you some direction to get the wheels going and build up that momentum early on um, and so there will be there are more resources more in-depth resources like the ones that michael mentioned um, within the writing center and our resources drop down so please make use of that um, but here i just want to frame your mind into what we're looking for as, as ter in terms of structure and content. Uh, so the first, so there's, there's basically going to be three main parts of your essay: the introduction, the body, and the conclusion. And so your introduction is kind of like any presentation you may give, like a PowerPoint presentation. It's you always have a first slide that tells your audience what you're going to be talking about and why it's important. And so that's your introduction paragraph. You're just going to be basically pitch just overviewing, presenting an overview of what you're gonna be talking about and why it's important. So I want you to think about this because there's a there's an important statement in, in your introduction that your instructors look for and it's called a thesis statement. Essentially, this tells your reader what the purpose is of your essay. And so a great way for you to know what your instructor is looking for is to look at the module learning outcomes. So every module, you have four modules, Every module will have learning outcomes on the home page. So every module will have learning outcomes for every assignment on the home page. That is basically what your instructor is looking for, and that is what your that your your instructor will be looking for your or measuring your understanding of those concepts. And those are great statements uh, to put into your introduction into your introduction paragraph, and to help ground you when you're answering these questions. So you know the in addition to the learning outcomes, your assignments will have like three or four questions that you have to answer. Use those learning outcomes as like the lenses to, to view those questions. So address the learning outcomes through answering the questions. So consider that with your thesis statement development uh, and definitely make use of those module learning outcomes because they give you, they give you what your instructor is looking for on each assignment. From there, you've got your body paragraphs. And so one of my best, one of my, uh, the best recommendation, recommendations I could give you from your first getting off, getting going in your writing um, is, is uh, to break up those questions into sections and subsections using headers and subheaders. So just like on a PowerPoint presentation, you have headers that tell your reader or tell your audience what this, what this slide is about. Same thing within your essay, include a header, include subsections within that, that make it overtly obvious to your instructor that you are addressing this part of the assignment. This is the key term that you're gonna be addressing. Um, so not only does it provide some structure for you, for your essay, but it also makes it very obvious for your instructor that you are hitting all those points within your, within your assignment. Um, and so, again, going back to the content of of your of your assignment is your instructor looking for the conclusion? Uh, yeah, sure, we're looking for your answer to the question, but again, we're looking for the reasons why. And so, when you draft your paragraphs, I kind of want you to think about aiming for about four to seven sentences, 
Uh, trust me, nobody's going to be counting your sentences out. But I think it's a good guideline for you because if you're going below that four sentence mark, then you're probably being a little bit too brief or concise and you're not exploring the topics or discussing the topics in detail. So make sure you're going back and citing some evidence um, from your background readings. Again, we're looking for APA citations um, and, and some evidence, some objective research and evidence to support your conclusions. And if you're going above that seven sentence mark, then you're probably going, you're probably uh, rambling on too much or you could make that into a more concise structure to better highlight your ideas or you just need to break up that longer paragraph into some more some more paragraphs in a, maybe two or three paragraphs but you don't want to go on and on a, a page and a half of text of block text um, you really want to break that up into small sections and subsections include those headers uh, and make it really easy for your instructor to to pick out those main points um, if you're if you're struggling, again, I, I talked about the thesis statements above, uh, but if you're struggling uh, in, in terms of how to start a paragraph and what your instructor is looking for, I always, I always mention these points right here. Define the key term, explain the application of the key term to the assignment, and then discuss why the concept is important to either the module learning outcome or just the class in general. Um, specifically and with, with specific focus to that to the to the module learning outcome so those three points I think if you cover those that should get you to that four to seven mark include some evidence in there to support your ideas and that's a great way of just getting started this is not going to be the perfect way I can promise you that your instructor will give you feedback but it's really important for you to take that feedback and then just continue to build build upon it your instructor is not looking for perfection. In fact, you shouldn't expect um, expect that of your instructor. We're here to make you better communicators and better critical thinkers. That's our value. That's that's our objective. And so, when you when you explore these concepts in a variety of different ways by defining and explaining and discussing um, the value of these concepts, you're you're in essence exploring these concepts from a variety of different ways, and you're thinking about them in different ways so consider that when you're drafting up your your assignments and then the conclusion paragraph is the last part of your ass assignment and it, and it really just reflects it's just kind of like a reflection of your introduction your introduction is telling your your audience what you're going to be talking about why it's important and your conclusion is going to be basically stay stating what you already have talked about and why that's important and so they're they're mirror images of, e of each other um, again, this is not uh, an all-inclusive, these are not all-inclusive suggestions. It's just simply to get the wheels going. And over time, you're going to receive more detailed feedback from your instructor become, uh, to become a better written communicator, uh, a better writer. Uh, and so I just highly suggest that you, that you accept that feedback and, you know, with, with willing and open arms. So I hope that helps. Again, refer back to the resources under the, you know, the writing resources under the resources tab if you need some more in-depth um, advice. Always reach out to your instructor because we love hearing from you and we love to, to support you in this process. Honestly, it is, it is our honor to, to serve you. Uh, so please make use of us. And with that, I am going to transition back to Daniel Sloan to talk about some career networking. Great. Thank, thank you, Dr. Dell here. Uh, really, really great advice from one of the finest when it comes to writing. And before we get into the Q&A, which, which will be in the next minute, just a reminder, if you have questions, submit them on your control panel. You'll see the question box about halfway down. We have a few questions in already. Uh, and so to talk about some of the resources we have for students, we're well aware that the students coming into Trident are not your traditional students. You have jobs, you have families, you have experience under your belt. And we want to really provide some resources so you can help you, yourself help your careers and help you meet your students or help your fellow classmates. Excuse me. First, we have Alumni Fire, which is for all students, not just Trident alumni. It's a place where you can connect with other students 
Trident alumni, Trident faculty, Trident staff that help you get advice on your education, career, and more. And conveniently, on Wednesday at 1130 Pacific, we are running an introduction to Alumni Fire webinar through Trident's uh, Career Center. I will I'll drop that registration link in the chat box so you can sign up. But that, that will be a, a great resource and it's perfect timing for you guys coming in uh, this session. Uh, lastly, CareerBeam, it's a good place for uh, career development resources such as resume reviews, interview practice, and more. So just sh uh, drop an email to alumni at trident.edu if you'd like more information about Alumni Fire or Trident for Careers at trident.edu for more information on career being. So let's move, uh, let's move on to our Q&A uh, and joining Dr. Del Hierro and Michael is going to be a member of our admissions team, uh, Ron Tuchin, uh, who, who joined Trident in 2017. Very, uh, very skilled professional and very passionate about what he does, and he enjoys working closely with students, helping to motivate and empower them to be successful and achieve their academic goals. And, and conveniently, Ron, first question we have is for you. Uh, so just let's do a quick mic check, and then we should be ready to go. Testing, testing. Great. So Michael, of course, has assigned students homework already finished that threaded discussion so which assignment which assignment should students be starting with first first thread discussion case or the SLP uh, typically what I when I am working with students uh, I try to ease them into their first class even if they're comfortable with college and I tend to believe that doing the discussion question first is probably the least time consuming, um, the most straightforward, and it gets you more comfortable than uh, working with the case of the SLP. So as Michael mentioned earlier, uh, typically within the first two days of school, I like to have a student complete their discussion, and sometimes even on the first day, just to show the, the uh, teacher uh, that you're motivated, that you're uh, excited about school. And uh, so yeah, the discussion typically is the first question. Yeah, I'll just I'll hop in and piggyback off off of Ron really quick. I think that's that's some great advice. Um, the discussion again; these first few days are about building momentum, and throughout the rest of the session, it's going to be keeping that momentum. Sure, you're going to be falling off course every now and then, but it's going to be so important for you to just put yourself back on the rails and do the next thing to get the wheels going again, no matter how slow you may be moving. Uh, as you move through, you're going to find that you can, through, through your classes, you're gonna find that um, uh, the SLP might be shorter, it likely is shorter than the case assignment. So some students like to work on the case assignment next um, and work and set a deadline for themselves to complete the case assignment the first week and then the SLP the next week, or maybe it's um, some, you know, vice versa. But some students like myself, when I was a student, I, I actually liked to do the SLP first because it was it was shorter. It was a way for me to um, build up momentum quickly and then carry that on through the next week of the module. So uh, de depending, so there's you're really it really doesn't matter which one you do first. Oftentimes, uh, sometimes the SLP and the case assignment go hand in hand, so you may have to just keep an eye out for that. Um, but you, you do have some flexibility. Again, that's. That's the beauty of the program is that you have flexibility to work um, at a pace and, and address, you know, have the attention on, on the assignments in a way that is that works best for you. Great, thank you. And uh, next next question, this one's for you, Dr. Del Hierro. I, I just want to, um, th yeah, this is an important one. I want to make sure it's clear, be uh, but, Will, do professors provide feedback to submit an assignments or are students just to figure out what to fix on their own? Absolutely, yes. On every assignment, you should be receiving some detailed feedback. Uh, there's a rubric for every assignment. So uh, that that is where you can actually see where the points and the, the feedback 
are um, deducted or or applied. So what you're doing well and what where you need to improve, but you should absolutely be receiving feedback from your instructor. If you're not, please reach out to your instructor or your student success advisor because there may you may not be looking in the right way in the right place. Um, every instructor will have their own um, approach to feedback. Some include feedback into the rubric. Some include feedback within the text box of your of your um, feedback um, place, like the notes form, and kind of and they do like a holistic assessment. And some will actually take your paper and then edit edit and make comments actually within the within the paper. So you're going to have different types of feedback. So just kind of keep that keep that in your in your mind and, and be able to adapt and reach out to your instructor or your student success advisor if you need something different or more uh, than what you're getting. Great, thank you. And and Ron, um, Dr. Del Hierro just mentioned student success advisor. Obviously, your role is admissions advisor. Uh, can you explain to me, students, what a uh, student success advisor is and when students will be be paired with them? Sure. Uh, here at Trident, uh, as you've probably noticed so far, we pretty much work as a close team. And the student success advisor is usually transitioned to the student uh, close to the second week in the class. And they work with students typically from that second week onward. And they're a little bit more involved with the students with uh, their ongoing scheduling assistance within the class themselves. However, as an advisor, uh, I always let students know that I am there as well. So if they can't reach their student success advisor, they can always reach out to me or to their, their advisor. Uh, but they get a little bit more into the nitty gritty. And uh, once the momentum is built and they don't need me as much, they typically transition to the student success advisor. <clears throat> I would, I would just add, as a student success advisor, can you guys hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I would just add, uh, Ron had touched on it. Yes, we're very involved in terms of scheduling. Um, when am I gonna graduate is a question I get very often, which is great. Um, transfer of credit is, is a big one. And just going over your degree plan. So once all of, we receive all of your transcripts, the registrar will complete a degree plan, and then you'll know what transfers in. So I go over that with every student as well. And then you're really able to get a good idea of when your graduation is, is going to be. Um, and we would set up your schedule as, as essentially as you would like. There are, there are prerequisites, of course, but um, we kind of go over the, the remaining courses that you would need and, and kind of map you out as far in the future as we can. Um, that way you have a good expectation of, you know, what's coming next and, and you can really keep that momentum going. Um, but we also like to chat. So <laughs> you, you may get people that just want to get to know you too. So I, I would say that about the student success advising team. Great. Yeah, thank you, Michael. Yeah, and yeah, we do have a lot of SSAs, as we like to call them, who do love to chat back when everyone was in the office regularly. and it, I'd go out there to visit, it just seemed like everyone was on the phone constantly working with students. Uh, so Michael, next question, we have, we have a student who's based in Okinawa. Will this be a disadvantage uh, for, for her when submitting assignments? I would not say a disadvantage. Um, assignments are due at 11.59 Pacific time. So you just need to make sure that you're submitting your assignments according to that timeline. Um, if there is going to be an issue with being able to submit an assignment, just reach out to your professors. Um, that's the biggest advice I give to every student that I have. Um, but our timetable is 11.59 p.m. Pacific time, or when assignments are due. Great. Thank you. And so let's, let's move back to Dr. Del Hierro. Had a question about about APA formatting, uh, and the question is: is, write, is the writing format in accordance with APA six or seven? Um, I think it, I think you're on mute, Doctor Del Hierro. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Right now we're still on six. 
Uh, your instructors are likely not going to, I mean, are not going to dock you if you stay on six or if you're moving to seven. So don't let that be a concern to, to stop you. Um, I would say just, I mean, my, if I was a student, I would just work with the current version of APA, which is which is seven. Um, and all of that, there, there's a great manual within the uh, within Purdue OWL. Purdue is just kind of like, they have this great online writing resource lab that um, outlines APA in great detail. So I would make use of that Purdue OWL APA style. And I would, um, uh, it really isn't a big point of, um, I think your instructor, I'm, I'm pretty certain that your instructors will accept either version, but just for your practice moving forward, it might be better to just stick with, to start working with, with seven uh, since that that's the most current version. That's just my suggestion. Uh, really nothing to lose sleep over though, I don't think. Thank you. Uh, and the next question, we're gonna stick with you, Dr. Del Hero, and might we get some feedback from Michael or Ron on this too, but uh, after we submit a case or SLP, will we be able to, to improve our current assignment with that feedback or is this feedback that we should hold on to and apply it to our subsequent assignment? Yeah, so every instructor is gonna have a different approach to this as well. My, my approach and a lot of the times uh, with the instructors that I work with, um, they are more than willing to accept uh, um, resubmissions. Um, that's just within University College. I know that there are other instructors who who do not accept resubmissions. I, I would strongly encourage you to reach out to your instructor though for questions and specifically with that, if you want to resubmit an assignment uh, to earn a higher grade and if you have more more time or you know, if you have time on your hands to make those uh, recommendations. But again, it's going to be on a case by case basis um, from your instructor. So please reach out to your instructor. Regardless, I can't express this enough. Uh, look up that, that feedback from your instructor because in, in future assignments, we're going to be looking for um for how well you incorporate those those points um within your writing um it's it's just kind of a point of frustration for faculty members when we're when we put in all this time for feedback and then students are just blowing through the assignments without incorporating that feedback so please please make use of that i would i would add to that that um i also whenever i do my tucks I think it is a case by case assignment. Uh, to me, this goes back to, I think the time management. So if I had a student that submitted their case assignment on the Wednesday of the first week, that case assignment is not due in for another 10 days, essentially. So I would definitely allow that to be resubmitted. Um, but this is definitely, as Dr. Del Hierro said, up to the individual faculty member. So some faculty will allow it, some will not. But I know that all faculty members want you to look at the feedback that, that is given. And they do want you to build on that, on the feedback that is given. So going back to the original question, should I, you know, build off the feedback or should I just resubmit the assignment? You definitely want to build off that feedback for the next assignment. And then I would ask the professor if you can do a resubmission. They may let you, they may not. Michael also brings up a good point uh, that comes up in these, that often comes up in these webinars. And the question is, can I submit early? And the answer to that is yes. You again, the beauty of this program is the flexibility of the program. So if you, let's say you're taking two two classes, that means you have basically four four written assignments and two discussions. It might serve you well to get in the case in the SLP for one class in one week, and then the case in the SLP for you know to submit that the next week. So that's that's something that Michael uh, alluded to in his in his. Um, response right there but you can absolutely work that into your time management plan submit early and that gives you that time to um, make adjustments if if possible and if necessary another question that we get is can i submit can i work ahead and and submit you know, beyond the module and the answer to that is yes but incorporate the feedback from your instructor from the previous modules as well um 
and and if and if you do have questions then reach out to your instructor so that you can set up so that they can work with you on that time management plan and of course your student success advisor or their their masters at at helping you um strategize through the class and and arranging those schedules don't make use of them don't don't underestimate their their value I absolutely agree. And, and a point I normally make during the career networking section that I forgot to make, but is perfect for here, is just remember that your faculty members or the professors you work with, they're not, they're not just there for, to help you out in class. They're, you're, you're, you're an adult. You're, you have a career. If there's a professor who has um, a career background, that you want to sh want to shoot for, reach out to them, ask them about that, build that relationship, because you, theoretically you can you can you should be taking your connections at Trident beyond your years at Trident, and just because we're 100% online doesn't mean you can't do that. In fact, it should be easy. It should be easy if you have a faculty member or professor you really like, find them on LinkedIn and add them. If you enjoy the advice you're getting from us today, find us on LinkedIn and add us. In fact, I mean, if we're able to, we'll put our LinkedIn profiles up and you can add us and we'll be happy to talk to you and work uh, through any questions you have uh, you know, together. So that looks to be all the questions we have for today. Uh, if anyone has any additional questions, drop them in the question box. We'll get to them via email. Uh, now we're going to end things and with a student success story from Ron. And so, Ron, I'm going give to you, give you the floor. Looking forward to hearing your student success story. Thank you, everyone, for attending today. A uh, success story I chose here was, is a recent success story, and it ties in well, I think, with a lot of the information that was shared by Michael and Dr. Del Hierro, et cetera. Uh, because it's one of my students named Michaela who started classes with us uh, this past June. And she had told me that she works full time. She has kids. Uh, she had started college in the past on campus, but never was able to finish uh, basically because she didn't have the time. And it took a little talking and a little uh, explanation uh, as to how flexible and supportive our online environment was and that I felt if she, you know, put the time in and the effort uh, that she would be successful online because she was a smart cookie and I can tell that she was very motivated. And uh, so she did decide to go back to college. And uh, I, one thing that I did tell her, I said, make sure, even if you've been to college before, pretend you haven't, spend time in the orientation, get familiar with the navigation in the classroom because there's a lot of things to do in there. Uh, communicate with your instructor so they get to know you and make sure that you manage your time effectively so that uh, the time doesn't get away. And she just called me last week at the end of last week uh, out of the blue and basically said, Ron, I just want to thank you uh, for having the faith and confidence in me because my job changed a little bit and I, uh, was, I have to work remotely. My two kids are home, so things are nuts. And I also had some other family crises that came up and I was ready to quit. Uh, and if it was a campus, I would have. But I did reach out to my teacher and I explained the situation. And uh, I reached out to my student success advisor and I uh, successfully passed the class and I was able to breathe out. And I started my second class and I'm enjoying it. And so I, it's just to, again, reinforce everything that we talked about before is basically manage your time, communicate, uh, get get a comfort level within the classroom and enjoy your journey. And uh, that's my story and I'm sticking with it. So again, welcome everybody and hopefully you all have a, an enjoyable, successful journey.